works. Um, yeah, apparently it does work. Yeah, wonderful. So, hello, come back to another Houdini tutorial or a model along with or just showcase. Um, it is about, I think, uh, differential growth. I might be, be the case that you can call it that. I do not actually know if it is this, but I think in terms of its style, um, it is quite similar. And I actually haven't seen like a tutorial on that yet. I have just found a website um, some time ago. I might link it into the description. I would actually really like to do so because I do want to give like the, um, the, the credit where credit is due because there's actually quite nothing besides like some paid courses uh, on that thing. And, uh, and uh, yeah, so uh, there's a bunch of other stuff that's actually like besides the point, I might get into one of the other things later on as well. Um, so the basic technique is using P scales. So the P scale attribute and then <clears throat> transferring that attribute using a solver node. Um, so inside the solver to like generatively remesh um, a, a base model. And uh, let's actually tidy this up a bit. Really sorry. So it's just only this piece here even though part of it is also like for, for rendering stuff and whatever. But yeah, um, so we start with, in my case, a box and uh, a normal node. The normal node is quite important. And on the other hand, we're having an add. Um, it might also be a circle. It might also be um, something else that just can generate points. Um, that's quite it. Then we have an attribute create node that is creating uh, a p-scale attribute for this certain thing. I might actually zoom in a bit um, for mobile devices. And uh, there is actually not that much to think about besides this first value here, which apparently for whatever reason um, does change like the whole appearance of, of this thing, um, as well as it is the case for the um, the points that I could actually also show you, I think. I assumed that they were like, I think it's somewhere up there, maybe. Well, anyway, we could actually also do it like this and then have a look at it. So this is like the circle. I intentionally decided not to have like a million points because in the end they act like forces for um, like the geometry inside of it or the geometry that we want to remesh or distort or whatever. And um, so, yeah, uh, not going overboard. It is actually quite um, computationally intensive. For whatever reason, I'm actually not quite, I do not quite understand why, because I'm also just really conscious about using like meshes or the remeshing with like quite big, um, big, 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 big triangles in this case, as you can actually see in the model uh, on, on screen. But yeah, for whatever reason, it is the case. So we also create an attribute create node here with the P scale as a name. And um, in this case, I've valid it with one. Uh, in the original piece, both was point, point 0.25 or point 0.025. Um, yeah, uh, there were actually some other notes that weren't explained like in this tutorial or actually blog post from fucking 2018 or something. Um, but yeah, so we have those two attribute grades and we put this into a solver. Um, this is actually quite unnecessary there. So everything, uh, below this, the, the solver is just for me to kind of have a more beautiful mesh or actually poly wiring it because might actually also look quite interesting to see the wiring of this thing, but yeah. So we go into the solver and there we have, first of all, the remesh. For me, it was quite important. It wasn't stated in the original tutorial to have it adaptive because it just works faster and it's not like killing my performance. 
So I'm having it adaptive and I've also activated the, the minimum size attribute that I have uh, came to, to the conclusion by, let me see, what is he called? You might know him too. Um, fuck, where's the name? Uh, Junishiriko Horikawa. So uh, if you, for example, I'm just having a video in front of me. Uh, Houdini, Algor Houdino. Houdini algorithmic life hashtag 051 dash geodesic hatching. You'll find his channel or just J-U-N-I-C-H-I-R-O H-O-R-I-K-A-W-A. -A. He's doing a lot of like uh, computational tutorials on all sorts of things, which are really interesting though. Um, I might actually kind of get rid of <laughs> watching my own fucking stream. Naya. Yeah. Okay, so going ahead. We're having the remesh node with adaptive remeshing and also the minimum size activated because in the following point wrangle, we are defining this minimum size with uh, point 0.1 in this case. For me, this worked quite well to have like somewhat of a, a good looking mesh, but also having proper performance so that I can actually have a longer simulation, which ends up uh, giving me more interesting shapes and things and whatever. So the fuse node doesn't really work, so I might get actually rid of it. And I might also uh, turn this back down. Okay. Then we're having a point warp. <coughs> Sorry. In this point warp, uh, we're having the. <coughs> uh, we are having the the p value to the position, and um, so with a unified noise. Which for me, I gotta be honest, I think I could also just not use it. For me, it doesn't change that much. Might be also a mistake in my setup, but whatever. Also set to 3D input and 3D noise and then normalizing it and then putting it to the normal. So basically the whole script works on the normals of this thing. Okay. Um, what I have added now is uh, measure the curvature that you see with this uh, coloring here. So you're having the conca con convexity and also concavity. Um, and uh, this also creates an attribute. So by using, for example, uh, a group, you can define this convexity and concavity uh, by, for example, saying at convexity bigger than 0.7. So, so if I change this, this would um, also then take uh, a different amount of points here. But why do we do this? And all these other groups are besides the point now. So you basically just need this one. In this attribute transfer that we have also connected to the, the first input. So um, this uh, attractor points that we have defined uh, outside of the solver. If we go into here, um, these settings apparently change something. For me, it doesn't do that much actually. But in the attributes, we set points, p scale, and also a destination group, which is them. <clears throat> so basically, at least as far as I can understand it, we are driving the whole thing using the convexity slash concavity points that we have decided to use. Um, because there is some, some work by Christoph Bader um, around all sorts of growth algorithms and stuff. Um, and one of them is actually growth by curvature. And so I thought, well, um, what if I just take those two points or those few points, those concave or convex points? Okay. Then we are relaxing in it. Um, also by P scale, also mind this attribute here. And then we're smoothing it. And afterwards I'm anyways going to, to process, uh, or I am processing the whole mesh. Um, but yeah, so depending on what you're using as like the left side, so in this case, I'm having a box here with a normal node. Um, I have also tried it with um, a grid and thicken uh, or, or thickness. Do you see something? Yeah. And um, you could also use a sphere. You could basically use everything. And um, quite all of it really depends on your computational power that you have available. Because as I said before, it is for some reason quite intensive. But so if we select the solver and view it, 
uh, we can see something happening and it is actually also quite interesting to simultaneously have a look at the, the point groups. So what we can see here is that we're having some sort of growth that I do to some degree understand and to a big degree I do not. But uh, for me it really worked the best using uh, like this, this curvature method. Um, of course, I can also just use some other random points. I could uh, also use some random um, color attribute and then just group these few points and or there might just be some, some completes different and other things that people come up with. Um, but this was quite just some interesting things for me to to go with, but let's see if I've actually, yes, the group one, the group one, um, these things are necessary. And um, yeah, and it also really depends, as I said, on like the initial geometry, which in this case was uh, just some block. So it's doing its thing and um, it grows in some way. Most often it is kind of the same way um, due to the quite big tessellation or uh, remeshing um, it doesn't really crash it just really gets quite slow this is like the slowest it gets um, but as you can see if we stop the simulation there this is basically the shape and form that we are getting I might oh no yeah so this is basically what is happening um, there is some uh, which should I think not really be the case but there is some um, some uh, some intersections of the mesh itself, as you can see here, and also there, uh, which make quite some interesting things, though. So, um, yeah, one might like it, one might also not like it. Um, I do just have to play around a bit with the things here, um, because I might actually go back to less divisions like three and then definitely reset the simulation. There's something going on with like, sometimes you can see a mesh and then a mesh processing over it. Um, for me, it always helps to uh, reset the simulation on the solver node on one hand and on the other hand, um, also um, <clears throat> going into the solver. For some reason it, uh, Kind of resets itself then again or whatever um yeah so if we watch it again we are now having like fewer uh attraction points and it should make a difference and um i'm actually not quite sure <laughs> sometimes it's actually quite interesting to see that certain things do change something and certain things do not change something in this case quite nothing changed and what might this be due to um, this is kind of like a problem with like always changing something. So this might also do something. Okay, that was interesting. <coughs> so to some degree it is like unpredictable. Uh, to some degree it is. So as you can see now, I don't know what it is doing. It is doing something quite interesting. Um, but so apparently point one is two less. So we're actually going with points 25 as it was also suggested by this initial tutorial. And um, yes, it does something. So um, this, even though it is actually not point 25, but yeah, um, it changes its form. It is something different. We are having again like this intersection that I, by the way, have not had or didn't have whatever um, before. And um, I might actually also like show you this because I think it, this was actually the most interesting one. Um, but yeah, um, so you're actually achieving like this, I think, think at least quite beautiful like brain tissue ish lump ish uh, flower ish uh, type of geometry that um, I think you can do it in grasshopper too and also processing which is a programming language but uh, I just 
think it's it's really quite interesting and might be quite useful for some people out there. Um, but I actually really want to figure out why it looks different than I used to see. Because it looked way better than this, which is a pity. Which might actually be due to me changing this. So, yeah. Might be the case. I actually don't know. I mean, something is different. <laughs> I've never seen this actually before, like this way of it behaving. Um, but I'll take it, I guess. So, yeah, as I've mentioned a few times now, um, it makes some strange forms, it makes some really interesting forms. Uh, probably the thumbnail looks quite good, but I don't really know how I did that now. <laughs> Unfortunately, I think, yeah, I think it must have been, it actually must have been this setup, at least in this way. Might actually have also been, uh, might have been two, two points. Could also be the case. I don't really know. And I might also have chosen like point two or something. Might also be the case. But yeah, changing anything about like the the <clears throat> this iterative iterative part here, like in the solver, really does change uh, quite a lot of things. Um, as I said, I think those conditions really don't do that much. I might actually go back to here and change it to one. Yeah, this is what I meant. So now we're basically having a mesh over another mesh, which is kind of weird. So we reset it and go into the solver and start it again. Just to see it looking like completely uh, the same <laughs> or something. This is really a pity now. Um, I actually do not really want to make this video too long because I know that nobody's going to watch it and it thinks, ah, it's a one hour video. I'm definitely not going to watch this one. Um, so the convexity is turned on. It is using group one. Yeah. I might actually get rid of those two in the meantime, just to see if anything changes there. Um, we are relaxing it, we're smoothing it. We might actually have a look at this down there. It might actually also be like the orientation of the grid, which I think I haven't changed actually. Let's actually go back to this thing because I assume that it is now not gonna like have this this one big lump, but rather spread more. And yes, it does spread more. So there might actually be like the correlation of having quite a low P scale value on both sides, or at least one side. So, I mean, what if we, what if we change that to this? Let's see. Okay, now it is dying. Escape button, my favorite button. Let's see. So far, so same. Um, might actually be more about like the P skill value of the attribute create. What might actually be the case is that I normally have not used this point bob thing. I think this might be the problem. And because it is Basically, as far as I understand, some noise, adding some noise to uh, the P scales. And so if we go back to this, I think, and we're resetting it and we're also going to the solver, it might create something again that we are familiar with or might actually also not do it. But it definitely looks differently or different than before.
but yeah, so if we let it grow for a bit, um, it's gonna become like some sort of one thing. But as far as I've seen, I think, please take it with a grain of salt, by using this uh, convexity, um, so driving the whole thing by convexity, there should not be like intersections. And as far as I can see here, there is also no intersection. I think. Um, I've actually seen some tutorial. So this is a completely non-vex tutorial, actually, which is uh, might might also be interesting to some people. Um, and one might also play around with like all of those uh, variables or possible ways in which one could could drive this process, like not having curvature, but maybe having the volume of certain elements um, or like just just the color or something. We might actually also do this just for fun because actually also I want to see it. So we are using a random attribute and it is actually also this. So we're having a group again and we're changing it to points and we are setting it to at CD. Maybe I don't know what this does. I don't even know if, if this changes something, but yes, apparently it does. Um, I think it works the best if we're having not like just tens of billions of points. And so we're going to group four it was, I think. I mean, we could definitely also just use two uh, values. But since it is also like going through a bunch of different colors there, but so we might actually have it like in two values, black and white. So everything apparently that is dark now, besides, no, er okay, that's weird. Or the other side, well, and it's, uh, th this at least does need, and it also changes, right, there was something. Um, the grid in the box, this is a polygon. For some reason, uh, you could also use a mesh. I mean, could also demonstrate that. So this is using it, uh, using the polygon. And by the way, also like using this um, color thing here. Um, we might actually also just change like this P scale to one, just to see what it does. No, please don't die on me. Thank you. Yes, and it behaves differently, um, a little bit at least. It's a bit thicker. Oh, makes sense. <laughs> okay, like p scale actually is the the point radius. So when you uh, copy two points like a sphere to a certain point, and this point has something over one as a p scale, so one point one, one point five, it is gonna be bigger. This sphere that you have uh, 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 copied to point it onto. So theoretically speaking, if I go ahead and do a five there, it must become thicker. And yes, it does become thicker. Um, the problem with thick is, is that we are generating some weird things. And it's also dying on me. So it is more like one a uh, big thing might actually be also a scaling issue, could be the case, I don't know. Um, but yeah, let's go back to one for the time being. And what did I actually want to do? All right, so when I change this to polygon mesh, uh, it, I think it does something different or it's just differently meshed and therefore just looks differently. Yes. So in this case, for example, this is like another form that often happens. We're having like inverted, we're having it kind of inside of it for whatever reason. But yeah, so when I go back to the polygon itself, it probably looks differently, I hope. And yes, it does. It's getting lumps again. Right. Okay. Um, that is actually it with the mesh growth thingy thing. Um, 
I think there should also be one with a line. Might be this. Where is a line? There is a line. Please don't die. Yes, this it is. So we're having a line connected to a pop network. Everything else is like up to you. So we're diving into it. Uh, we're having this line here. <clears throat> And in the source option, we're having the impulse activation with a code $SF uh, equals equals one to make sure as far as I can understand it, that we are only having it run once. Then we're having a pop wrangle to also add a P scale to the end and uh, start point of this line um, or all the points because we might also have more points. <clears throat> then we're having a pop solver, and after the pop solver, we're having a pop wind. And the most important part, gas particle separate one. Um, I think the settings do not really matter here, but this makes sure that those two points of the, of the line do not connect and or do not hit themselves or have a certain distance in between them and other points or every point has some distance in between them and other points. And the thing is, inside of the solver, we're having a resample node. So we're basically starting with a line and then add more points to the line while this line just being distorted, but we're resampling it so it just stays a line, but just with more points, as far as I can understand. Might also be wrong, but it kind of does something like this. So this is also in 3D space. Um, I know that there are quite a few tutorials on that. Why can't I see? Okay, there we go. Um, but it also never quite intersects unless of course you're uh, offsetting it or meshing it or piping it. So this line to a huge amount, then of course it will um, intersect. Uh, you could also project this onto a plane in some direction. You might actually also do this uh, with uh, a circle here. Wherever this circle is, there is a circle. I actually don't know what this line is anyway. And so what is happening is this. Oh my god. Which I think also actually looks quite nice. Okay, um, I think this is actually it. There is nothing more to say. Um, of course, you need some sort of a force to like initiate change. In this case, you could use a pop force. I've used like this pop wind and this thing. And uh, one might actually also kind of change those parameters to just say what happens. And it becomes definitely a... Uh, 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 thinner, uh, a more finer uh, waving, knitting effect, whatever. Or it is just really big and then you're having like one, one big lump. Whatever happens to this when... And they actually do intersect, do they? Or is it in 3D? Well, it is in 3D. Hmm. Interesting. But yeah, uh, might actually be useful for some people. But yeah, up until then, I'll see you the next time, I think. Um, in this, well, I could actually also quickly do that somewhere here. Oh no, please don't. I think that I'm also having like, this is a flip thing. This is also something different. Um, the thing with pop networks is that you theoretically could also use noise as a vector or as a line or as a point that is uh, moving in space and collides with a wall or things used for generating geometry. So by then uh, VDBing it, so VDB particle it and then VDB converting it and whatever uh, might be an option. You might also create a line in between the points and whatever. So, but the thing is, I might actually just quickly show you. There is a collision. I think it's static collision, static object. If one is using the static object and also the merge like this, uh, one needs to make sure that this merge is set to mutual. 
then you're also adding a collision detect to then uh, make actually Houdini think about like collisions as far as I remember might also be wrong here. Uh, and also to, to compute them and whatever. Inside of the static object, you of course choose with the SOP path or OBJ path or whatever path you want to choose, uh, some geometry that uh, ideally is in proximity of this point or around this point actually as well. But for me, it only worked when using surface collisions for some reason. And also considering, um, where is it? I think the size of the point because might actually be inside of here, collision, yes, the particle size. Um, I think as far as I remember, if it is too big or too small, it's not being like, um, nothing is gonna happen quite. We might actually do this really quickly, just force me to make sure that I still know it. I actually don't know what I'm destroying here. Um, but we're using this, that and the other thing, and we might actually also use some sort of a box that is a bit bigger in the second thing here, because I think we could definitely also, no, it's a pity. I thought we could also assign like the second input of the whole thing. So I have to get back and rename it to collision or something. So we go into here, we go to the sub path, and uh, it is collision, 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 there we go. So this is the collision thing. So what makes sense is setting the view to wired. In my case with D, you can open the uh, how things look settings. And yeah, then we need a pop wind. And I think it might already be working. Of course, using the most boring wind there is. And it might be the case that we also have to say that we want the first connection to be the thing that is. We might actually also get rid of this pop wind. Um, or we just have a bigger swirl size might actually also be the case just to better see or we might actually get rid of it i think we might get rid of it and use gravity which is always down there for some reason yeah okay um so it should detect and I do just want to see. Okay. So something is going on that I dislike. This is our collision thing. This is our initial whatever. We might actually also get rid of this. Oops. What is happening? Please stop. Thank you. Uh, we might actually have a look at this and use a uh, pop location, which is actually also quite interesting because we're setting it to like one point, no, 10 points, uh, because it is um, doing it from the center, which might be interesting because uh, audio or noise, I think, or I would say it would make sense to channel it from one direction or from one particular point and see how it behaves in this space. By the way, the space can also be deformed, but one has to use like deforming geometry if it is animated with some mountain uh, mountain node or whatever. Um, but why doesn't it work? Surface show collision radius, which also shows us that we are using the right thing. Is this hidden? I don't want to be hidden. Um, it is also not, let's actually use, let's actually use the collision thing too. 
collision. Yeah, we see a collision happening here. And I think the problem that I have done is actually um, collision, collision radius, surface, bullet data, no. Ah, it might actually be, yeah, <laughs> this one has to be set to fucking mutual. I don't know why, but uh, even though I think it could also be this, and there's actually one uh, ignore merge relationship. But no, apparently <laughs> I can't really like do it the opposite way around. So uh, I think, yes, now it is doing something. Now it is popping off of this, uh, this surface here. Um, uh, uh, I mean, at this point we could also get rid of the gravity to see this happening. And the beauty is that we can compute like really a shit ton of points here. And then, uh, for example, having it like a trail and, uh, you can like set the distance in whatever big thing and then VDB from particling it and then uh, having something like this, which looks quite ugly now because we are set in um, in line mode. So we're just seeing lines, uh, but this is basically what is happening here. And uh, one could definitely also use some other forces. There might be some way to draw a line from like the starting point or just from one point to, to the other, or Maybe if we're just having uh, one point one, maybe this makes more sense. Activation, what if it's zero? Constant activation, no. Well, there might be some way to just have one point or whatever. Don't want to fiddle around with it now. But also in uh, the static object, one can also improve the the bounce, uh, which is going to be this. So I think that it might be cool to demonstrate what if it's too big, this particle size. So it is already computing here that something is going on. It might actually also be about it being too small, 0 0.01, maybe. It might not be... Uh, Sometimes it's not being detected, like that there is uh, a surface or that there is like the collision, the collision object. Uh, but yeah, I think this is going to be it. I hope that I've been able to share something of value with you and I'm hopefully going to see you next time. So